Hi everyone, my name is Brittany. I'm a wine buyer for Total Wine & More. I've been with Total Wine for over nine years, and in that time, I've had the privilege to travel around the world visiting some of the most amazing winemaking regions. I've also had the opportunity to work with talented and extraordinary winemakers and producers all around the world. I am thrilled to be a part of the virtual tasting series at Total Wine. Today we have my friends Lisa Vanderpump and her daughter Pandora partnering with us to walk through some of their amazing wines. I have my wine chilled and ready to go. Here's the rosé. Thank you Brittany and thank you to Total Wine for having us and supporting us. It really means a lot. We've actually been locked up for months. months. So <laughs> I've been super excited about talking to you guys today. And we're excited to tell you about the Vanderpump brand and all of our wines and yeah. taste them with you and have some fun. This has really been a labor of love, creating this brand. It's taken years and we've been in the restaurant business for something like 38 years. And I think we've actually had over 35 establishments. So, you know, for us to create something that we actually sell in our restaurants and sit there and drink it, sitting right next to you, it's important, it's really good. So excited to tell you about it. I think our love for wine and food probably grew out of the hospitality industry and just... Yeah, and I've always loved entertaining, creating kind of dinners at home for family and friends. And we always knew that we wanted to get into wine. We love wine. We've always lived in places like the south of France and been close to vineyards and stuff like that. So getting into this project was something that we just knew our family wanted to do. So which one would you like to start with? Should we start by tasting the Vanderpump Rosé? Why not? It's sort of the OG of the collection. As good a place as any. <laughs> All right. We used to drink a lot of rosé. Actually, a lot of people wouldn't admit to that, but I actually do admit to that. We used to drink a lot of rosé when we lived in France, kind of before it was cool. Would you care for some Vanderpump Rosé? Just give it to me and <laughs> let me drink it out of the bottle. Would oh you God, care I forgot. With that? People are actually watching, so I have to behave. <laughs> Um, well, here it goes. I love the pale peach color of this. Yeah, it's got that perfect mix of that pale blue pink and that peach color. It's like that very traditional, classic Provencal beautiful pink. Mmm, mm. peaches, strawberries. I mean, we were as fussy, not just about the taste, but actually the look of it as well. So this, the crest, the feel of the bottle, the weight of the bottle, the yeah. color, all of those components were really important to us. I'm everything about visuals as much as taste. Well, Vanderpump Rosé is a Côte de Provence Rosé, so it comes to you direct from Côte de Provence in the south of France, um, which is something we always knew that we wanted to do. I mean, I actually went to high school about 45 minutes from the vineyard that our rosé is produced at. Luckily, you weren't at school when we were producing this, otherwise you probably wouldn't, wouldn't have got any <laughs> That's that little Victorian. Cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> Um, but it is a very traditional, classic, dry Provencal rosé, which up until the last 10 years, you know, America didn't really have a lot of the Côte de Provence rosé going no, on. No, I think people thought of rosé as kind of sweeter and maybe more like a white Zinfandel. And I think um, now it's really kind of taken hold and it's become so popular, but it is something we've always loved in Europe. And I'm really proud of it. And thank you to everybody for supporting it. It's done fantastically well. So cheers to that. Cheers. It's got a little bit of strawberry and peach and even a hint of pepper and red currant on the nose. Yeah, is... it's kind of full body, it's but nice. it's light as well. It's very beautiful. And it needs to be served really cold. Mm. And this is my favorite kind of lunchtime and summer early evening drink. I really think it's fantastic. So, yeah. And it's such a great wine to pair with food as well because it is dry. Yeah. So it's very food friendly. I know we love it with a lot of seafood, things like tuna tartare and, and chicken yeah. And, and yeah, appetizers. And we do rosé all day as well. well. As I say, I'm very much um, an aesthete and the visuals are very important to me as well. So to create the product that not only tastes good, it looks good too. Let's go on and talk about our California wines because that is our newest baby and we're very excited about them. So for the past few years, we've been working on our California wines project and that is our Vanderpump Chardonnay and Vanderpump Cabernet. And they are both from Sonoma. Um, our Chardonnay is a beautiful Sonoma Coast Chardonnay estate grown and our Cabernet is a Sonoma County Cabernet. And they are beautiful, 
expressions of sort of the way we feel about wine and that French influence that we love, but with everything that Sonoma has to offer. And I personally love them so much. After we created the rosé and had so much success with that, and of course that, you know, authentically came from France where we'd lived for like eight years. Yeah. And then we thought, well, we're living here and we love the California wines. And so it was a natural progression for us well, to California then... California is where our home is, it's where our philanthropy is based, most of our restaurants, our businesses. And it's just got such incredible wine country that it just seemed this perfect synergy to actually come home to California and start producing wines here And as if well. you haven't been to Sonoma, you have to go. It is heaven on earth, it really <laughs> is. So the Chardonnay, I mean, as you said, like the packaging is so beautiful. We kind of took a little bit of influence from our rosé packaging just to tie everything together. Had that beautiful sort of Provencal crest, but with a much more Californian label. Yeah. Very modern, but with a little bit of a classic twist and all of that. I will have some actually. Bannerpump Chardonnay is a very beautiful mix of that French influence and a Sonoma, California Chardonnay. It's, I mean, one of the things we didn't want out of a Chardonnay was too much oak and too, too much buttery. butter, yeah. which a lot of California Chardonnays do have, but we love that sort of crisp minerality and acidity of French like Chardonnay. Like hair, apple, and, it's very fresh. But we wanted a little bit of that oak and butter to round it off and really make it well balanced and beautiful to drink. With both of the California wines, I feel like they're a great depiction of sort of our history, where it is like this perfect marriage of French influence and California influence. So also, neither of these wines were too heavy. That was another yeah. thing. Because again, we served the wine by the glass as well. It had to be very drinkable. Mm -hmm. The price got to be approachable mm -hmm. again. And the visuals have got to be great. So again, we need to check all those boxes. You get a lot of that toasted brioche and butter right at the end, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. It mellows out that finish. But as you said, a lot of crisp apple and pear and yeah. a little bit of citrus. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the red, shall we? I know the red's your favourite. Oh, the is. red is my favourite. So after we had so much success with the rosé, and then we decided to create a Cabernet and a Chardonnay, it was a long journey actually to get it right and to get something that it's we all like absolutely, yeah, that we all absolutely loved. It's a beautiful colour too, that deep red. Right, it's rich, but it's not heavy. I mean, clearly it's not like a Pinot Noir. It's got a, a lot of fullness and body to it, but it's, mm, it's really, really beautiful. And I think part of the reason we decided to go with a Cabernet and Chardonnay is because of our French influence. I mean, they're the most popular grapes in France, but they're also the most popular grapes in California. And it just felt like this perfect, Match. Marriage, yeah, absolutely. It, this perfect marriage of French and Californian. And again, the Cabernet to me has a lot of that French influence, that Bordeaux style as well. Mm. Yeah, you get a lot of those berries and fruits on the nose as well, which is delicious, but it's got a really nice, clean, elegant finish. Yeah. And a lot of those sort of lush tannins too, which is exactly what I want out of a Cabernet. So again, one of the things it's really important to me. It's not just the way it tastes, not just the way it looks, but the way it feels as well. Mm -hmm. And this bottle is actually quite heavy, but it kind of makes it feel very important. <laughs> so, uh, well, it is it's very kind of, important to it, us. It's <laughs> majestic. It is. And that gold is such a beautiful pale gold color. Yeah. Where it's not too overpowering, but just looks very classic and beautiful. But to all of you, really, it's not too heavy, you know, because I would sometimes find a lot of Cabernets too heavy, and it yeah. really isn't. It's full-bodied, but it, it's not too heavy, so it's very drinkable. You don't want a Cabernet, well, I don't want a Cabernet that just sort of like stains your teeth immediately and stays in your mouth. Half of it, no. <laughs> you want something that you can enjoy yeah. in the afternoon, in the evening, with food, without food. I mean, it's clean enough and elegant enough that you don't need food with it, but it complements it and pairs with food very nicely. Are you drinking in the afternoon? I'm drinking it always. <laughs> I would Things have this I in my breakfast know. cereal if I could. <laughs> yeah, I know you like the red best. I don't know, Chardonnay maybe. Ah, uh, Rosé is still number one to me. Oh, I 
can't decide. All right, well, those are our California wines and I am so excited they're finally available because I have yeah. been like dreaming of the day when we would be able to actually have people try them. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun creating this brand and this kind of family of wines. <laughs> um, but let's not forget the little guy that started this all and that was the sangria so the sangria is coming back yes so vanderpump sangria which you guys loved so much that you drank it all <laughs> i drank most of it maybe we drank it all um, <laughs> but it is back and it is better than ever we used to drink sangria all the time in europe and that was one of the things i think that got us started in this business is the fact that nobody seemed to create a sangria that was easy, yeah. twist the cap, do it, that, but that wasn't like sugary and syrupy and sweet and disgusting. And it was elegant as well. It was elegant. And when I make sangria, when you always made sangria when I was probably too young to drink sangria, but snuck some anyway. I put it in her bottle. <laughs> I was weaned on sangria. But I think, you know, a lot of people didn't have a sangria that was wine forward. And this to me is a sangria for wine drinkers. Yeah. Like it doesn't have that syrupy, sickly, sweet aftertaste. In fact, there's no added sugar to it, which is a big plus. Right. We get people that are crazy about this. Mm. Like me. <laughs> I think the red is so delicious. It's got that beautiful deep red wine with a little bit of like orange and grapefruit and berries. And the pink, of course, is kind of got this rosé, uh, citrus, berries, beautiful smell to it. Really beautiful bouquet. And visually, I think it's kind of exquisite. What do you think? One of the things I love about sangria is that it's a great kind of entertaining drink. And I think when you put the fruit and the ice, and especially it's beautiful, you, they look like little jewels. Yeah, it really is great visual drink. And I love again the bottle, the way it looks. Yep, and um, this label that can be in water for right because you want to have it chilled on ice and it doesn't go. Anywhere. And again, it's not too sweet. It's made with Spanish varietals, a little bit of added fruit to it, but no added sugar. So it's all got that natural fruit quality in it, and natural fruit is all it's that we use. It's pretty so. strong as well. But that's I mean another reason that I love it is you, a lot of these sangrias that are on the market are very diluted and they've got all sorts of fruit juices in it and sugar and that's not what this is this is and look at this. wine with a touch of natural fruit and no added sugar and it really is delicious um, there's somebody very famous <laughs> that orders this by the case yes. on a weekly basis he does he does <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to share it with my mom out here another thing i love about the sangria and we have the sangria in a rosé and in a red um, which I think is very unusual for, to have a rosé sangria. A lot of people just do a white and a red. But, you know, in our family, pink is queen. So um, one of the great things about our sangria as well is you can use it for mixology. If you're somebody who loves cocktails but doesn't particularly feel like learning how to make a lot of them or having the difficulty with that, throw a little splash of something hard in here and you've already got all these infused beautiful flavors that's and actually true and it's delicious that's actually true if you put vodka with this or champagne yeah or champagne that's a great cocktail a little splash of rum or something in the red especially around christmas right. with some orange and cinnamon but we've got great recipes online that you guys can try out too Brittany, you gotta try this <laughs> <laughs> You will most definitely see me drinking one of these five. What's your favorite? Do There's one? horses for causes. You know, I love rosé for lunches. Um, I love that in the summer evenings. So I'm picking a favorite child. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I have a favorite dog, not a favorite child. <laughs> My dogs come first. Um, I don't know. I, I like white. I quite like in the evening to start with a white and then move to red for dinner. The Chardonnay to me was sort of a dark horse that I didn't realize I was going to love so much because I'm normally a red Yeah, you're not much of a white wine drinker. And I have become a white wine drinker, that's yeah. for sure. Mm, it's so delicious. You know, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's followed the family and our journey over the years and, you know, supporting us because it really means so much to us as a family. And we only want to bring you the best products. And as I say, when we're serving in our restaurants, we're actually sitting next to you and drinking it. It's of utmost importance that it is the best. And I really want to thank you, Total Wine, for being so incredible to us. Yeah. And thank you and follow us at, at Bounder Pump Wines because we always post some really fun behind the scenes content and recipes and exciting things for you guys. Come and see us at our restaurants and I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Cheers.
Cheers. Lisa and Pandora, I really want to thank you for joining us today. For our audience out there, I invite you to check out all Vanderpump wines at your local Total Wine & More store. Visit our website at TotalWine.com to shop these products and learn more about virtual tastings we have coming up. Cheers!